Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this special Thanksgiving edition of Ladies, 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 because once again, we've got the gift that keeps on giving for content creators that love to mock the hell out of desperate losers whose days are very much their best days are behind them, but they still decide to go out there and continue to parade themselves around doing whatever they can to keep themselves relevant to the wrong kind of people, that being the Hollywood studio system and to social media meme losers instead of actual fans or the actual fan base that they once had. Of course, that being Kevin Smith now in his most recent podcast appearance, talking about how he was uh, rightfully getting mocked for crying over the Black Panther sequel, Wakanda Forever, a sequel which I'd like to remind you dropped 79% in its uh, second weekend through total box office, an even bigger drop than the other Marvel movies that happened this year that have been one steady box office downgrade after another. And yes, it's telling that the most successful Marvel film of the past year, of let's say the past calendar year, past fiscal year, whichever word you want to say, is good old-fashioned Spider-Man. Yes, we've got the new Spider-Man movie, and that one is a Sony production. But of course, we've got Kevin Smith going on to the point of once again, either uh, doing whatever he can, if it's either a quick little video, like the season one finale of The Flash, or if it's a tweet, and then just an extreme close-up of him looking like he just survived being in the woods for three straight weeks after escaping a prison camp like he's Christian Bale in Rescue Dawn. Yeah, we got a guy right here who is definitely not exactly somebody who can ever hold on to the notion of him being one of us. He was, I really now believe, it's not just the matter of him crying so much that everyone from Shane Davis to Yellow Flash are talking about what methods he's using to drum up these prop tears, whether it's putting the little droplets in his eyes for like the clear eyes, or if it's a, he does something where he gets his face really close to an onion. But there's uh, both of them very understandably are accusing him of just faking all this, hoping that the attention from social media will somehow keep him relevant when uh, no. Yeah, vacant pumping of whatever is current thing, that's not going to keep you relevant to the people who really matter, your fans. You actually have fans out there who want to go out there and get yourself uh, whatever it is that, that you really should want from your fan base. You want to go out there and entertain them, whether it's a doing another film, or if it's some other kind of podcast appearance, or if it's something to do with you getting back into writing comics. Yeah, it's the fans that matter, not the executives, not uh, people online who are just sentient gender studies degrees who want to try and police thought because they have no ability to create or really enjoy a life. They only have the ability to do what they can to try and control and censor other people because that's what empty people do. And now we're starting to see it's not just his stomach that's empty of meat. Kevin Smith himself, his soul is empty of any content anymore because now, of course, another little example of people like him, the people who are either fake woke like him, desperate to jump onto current thing, or those who are full on into it and actually really believe this crap the fake tolerant left illustrating themselves perfectly because we've got him, Mr. Oh my God, I never knew anything about Harvey Weinstein. I'm so horrified at all my career to Matt, Matt Man. I'm going to go here, make a big speech about it in a public appearance and toss my wallet at the problem. Typical Cal Hollywood, California type of ass wipes who think that uh, a bunch of empty platitudes and throwing their wallet at a problem is going to stop it when no, it won't and it never will. And what does he do now in the wake of being this guy who is so much, I can't believe this, I'm so sorry about Harvey Weinstein and how I'm going to pretend I didn't know anything about what he was doing to women. Yeah, right. And now it's uh, between him and Quentin Tarantino thinking, yeah, I should have done something. Oh, you think, Quentin, baby? And what is now Kevin Smith doing? He's going on to a podcast and publicly trying to call out when really it looks more like any time that uh, Vosh gets rightfully belittled by the, by good old fashioned Razor Fist and he does some kind of comment or some counter video that has all of the actually sound appropriate counter argument of a child trying to pick an intellectual fight with uh, a college professor who actually earned their position. They didn't just get there based off of gender pronouns on their social media. Yes, it's hilarious. It's the, you, you, there you go, Mr. I can't believe Harvey Weinstein did all this now is belittling that Star Wars girl because she told him rightfully to be a man, stop crying over everything. 
because all you can ever seem to do anymore, Mr. Smith, is cry. If I'm going to bring Stone Cold Steve Austin in the equation, I've been saying your movies and careers for years now, Smith, and all these past few years between what you're talking about, about Star Wars, what you're talking about with the Flash season finale, what you be talking about with uh, all other kinds of crap that MCU is doing, or about your own career and your own films doing about as much business as the WWE of the modern day has been doing without Stone Cold Steve Austin, all all I see you ever do is nothing but cry, cry and cry. You want to get a Wham burger and some French fries from McDonald's? How about I take you out to my favorite bar here out in Texas and get you a nice cold glass of a Wineken? You act like that, you little sissy, because that's what you are. You can't take the criticisms of a little lady who goes around talking about Star Wars on social media without crying about it, because that's all you do. And then you bring your daddy into the situation and try to br drag his name through the mud about, oh, he cried all the time. Well, much like any statement from any kind of jackass in modern Hollywood like you, I would like to actually have some goddamn evidence to back this up. Because mostly the people like you, you like to go out there and preach and always talk and always accuse people of things with no damn evidence. But you know that there's going to be a whole giant apparatus of jackasses in mainstream media to protect you. Except, of course, when it comes to somebody that's on the side of those mainstream apps who has getting accused, then suddenly investigations and, e and evidence actually matter. E.g., the accusation being leveled at the Playboy organization and Hugh Hefner over the Secrets of Playboy miniseries right there, all over that A&E. And I can't help but wonder why. Everybody out there in that little city of yours doing what they can to try to keep their slice of the pie or take someone else's slice of the pie. It's a city that lives in fear. And that ain't just me suggesting that. That was something that an actually revered filmmaker like Terry Gilliam, you know, one we're supposed to hate because for decades he was able to go up against the Hollywood system and win, embarrass them into releasing one of his movies his way, not the way the studio head wanted. He went, he did that, and guess what? Now they've had a target on his head for years on end, and all he had to do was just insult Black Panther in an interview, and automatically they start getting all them bots humping up and around there to try to treat him like he's some kind of evil, disgusting bigot, like he's walking around in a pony white hood. When if I want to see a pony white hood, I'll got to look at this as a Democratic Party, since they were the political party that founded that fun little organization down south there. Yeah, that's right. Actually, know your history that isn't being curated by MSNBC correspondents, and you'll see that for yourself there. I would drop Kevin Smith with a Stone Cold Stunner, but I'm pretty sure that that's a waste of a good stunner. I'm going to leave my stunners for people who actually deserve it. Right now, all it takes to break every bone in the body and soul of Kevin Smith is to simply tell him to stop crying. And instead, he'll cry even harder. Bret Hart in 1997 didn't cry as much as this man cries if you tell him to actually go out there and do what he was supposed to do. Be a filmmaker. Be a voice of the fandom. Now you're just nothing but a pathetic little shell. Doing whatever you can to get yourself into the good graces of the mainstream of Hollywood instead of keeping yourself in the good graces of your actual fandom. You know, the guy who billed himself as being the voice of the fans? Well, it turns out now you're nothing more than a whiny little bitch. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. That's... And if only in the middle of that podcast appearance where he's calling out that Star Wars girl and talking about him trying to jump in onto the toxic masculinity bandwagon. Oh, my toxic masculinity. If Stone Cold would have actually showed up in a beer truck and just... Pfft, Hosed him down, hosed his uh, co-host down, hosed every, anybody, any actual person, all seven of them that really were retweeting and liking his uh, all this little crap he's been doing of all this fake crying since then. Yeah, just give them the, give them the beer bath they deserve. Because I'm pretty sure that what goes on in good old-fashioned beer, if it's Coors or if it's Budweiser, that might have some ingredients in it that's going to make a vegan melt. And that would be very funny to see. Uh, well, I'm going to go out there and make another quote. Who knew that all of Kevin Smith's writing talent was in his stomach? I was about to include directing talent, too, but then I began to remember, even in his heyday, the most astounding cinematic skills of Kevin Smith was having two smarmy Gen Xers stand in a two-shot and talk about God knows what for hours on end. And I'll say this, to Kevin Smith's interminably self-indulgent, long-winded writing as a screenwriter, it seems that somehow getting actually established regular working actors into his films seemed to be a harder deal for them than either his high school buddies or community theater actors he just found and threw into a movie because they were able to work for whatever it was he was going to make clerks for. 
So that's actually something to see. You know, here here's a guy who used to actually unintentionally, I believe, expose a lot of the people out there in the Hollywood world as nowhere near being as important or, you know, worthwhile as they were, either listening to them just speak in general or seeing them actually on stage or screen. I mean, remember, the big breakout role of Mallrats was Jason Lee, who was a skateboarder that appeared in some music videos. Then, on a lark, he goes in to audition for the lead in Kevin Smith's big studio follow-up to Getting Discovered. And it's interesting how he went and got his first film through the Weinsteins, put into major theaters, and became a big cult figure from there. But when it came time, he did off to go to Universal for to go and do Mallrats. Except then he went right back into the comforting, heaving man bosom of Harvey Weinstein instead of going out into the world of either sticking with Universal or maybe finding some other studio that doesn't have a man who was a full-on predator like he did. Hmm, I wonder, wonder, wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even Robert Rodriguez now is going off and doing something that does not keep a, a Weinstein association there in the forefront of your mind. Well, he has an even more horrifying association to deal with now, Robert Rodriguez, since then. The CW and Disney+. Plus. Yes, directing an episode of The Mandalorian where the most memorable thing about that was the little video he tweeted where he's playing guitar with the little baby Yoda prop. And also the example of how the in-development CW Zorro show, if that's still in development, is now really showing how the Zorro character is reaching peak public domain. Because, of course, we're going to have a gender swap on that one. But remember, yeah, it's the CW. I'm not so sure if they're actually going to keep going with that because of their terrible financial records actually getting posted for the first time since ever. So that giant house of cards there is going to be coming down, much like Kevin Smith's entire career, when a woman who talks about Star Wars on YouTube and even streaming in other ways, and her big creative outlet besides that is a cosplay calendar that actually does look nice, and both of the photo sets from both cosplay calendars, the one that she did and the one that she's now currently working on, I did full on my channel videos, uh, streams of recreating those pieces of my artwork, and they're up for sale in my Square store. They're under the pop culture illustrations category. I also did them in color, and they're under pop culture color drawings. And you see them, and those are works that, hell, it actually does look like it respects whatever character she's doing. If it's the currently being funded gaming one, or if it's the other one where she's doing, you know, Star Wars characters. If she's doing um, Lois Lane, the animated series Lois Lane, or Padme, yes, it's all right there right there to see in living color, and it is doing what Kevin Smith used to do. Respect the fans. G get them engaged with her via a mutual understanding and respect of those franchises. Star Wars, especially when it came to Kevin Smith, it wasn't just going out there and talking about superhero comics. But remember... There was a time where it was not a major profitable thing to really go out there and publicly talk about Star Wars the way he did, whether in film or rather just some kind of public speaking engagement. Because this is when his big career break was Clerks, and there he has that legendary long scene where they're talking about the ending of Return of the Jedi. And this was 1994, where the mainstream Star Wars has was not really exploding or re-exploding yet. That was about a year away from the legendary little Last Chance VHS box set of the original trilogy. And, of course, then that was two years away from the multimedia Shadows of the Empire crossover event. And three years away from the re-release of the films with the special editions. So here was a guy who was showing his cards of what he really liked and who were the kind of people he really wanted to communicate with. But now, instead, the kind of people who are using the internet to do what he did and going through all that as a filmmaker to get successful, now suddenly he's going out them and them having an opinion against somebody who is a phony and a complete shill in Hollywood that really does not understand what the fans are into and what the fans want to see. And if he has anybody nearby, they're either sticking with him because they're sick of fans or just because of out of an old misplaced sense of loyalty or a force of habit. So really, Kevin Smith literally has become everything he used to mock or simply not be. And now that Star Wars girl is the kind of person who is, is, is and will hopefully continue to be everything he said he was and decided to give up in order to cry and cry and cry on social media. And that's not my opinion. 
I know I'm right. And I want to thank you all for watching. Remember, if you're new, subscribe. Please check if you still are subscribed to my returning viewers since subscriptions have been getting removed again lately. And both new and returning viewers, besides liking and sharing the video, the best way to support my work is to shop in my Square store. It's the first link in the description below where I have my pen and ink illustrations. Today is actually, yes, this is Thanksgiving, so I have a little preemptive uh, sale before Black Friday. My posters category, it's the new category in my store. The posters are 18 by 24, hand-drawn, hand-colored. They are usually at 200 bucks, but for today, it's my little Thanksgiving sale, and it will continue on tomorrow to my Black Friday sale. They are half off to this uh, tomorrow and today. They are only a hundred bucks a piece. And for today, my pen and ink pieces are twenty-five bucks. My color drawings are thirty, and also I have sketchbooks for twenty-five. You can commission me for a pen and ink piece for fifty, or a color piece for sixty, or a trading card for twenty. And tomorrow, there will be a Black Friday sale where my illustrations will be 20, will be marked down 20%, so they'll be only 20 bucks. And besides all of that, absolutely positively do not forget that you, whatever you get in the store, if you get one thing or several things, it only comes with a flat $5 shipping and handling fee. And beyond that, remember that there's also a donations category. It's the first thing you see in my store. Any dollar amount, f uh, any denomination from around the world is accepted. So remember, if you live outside of America and you want to commission or buy my work, my store cannot receive orders from foreign addresses. So you would have to go out there and uh, make your payment for your items or for your commission via a donation. Add up the prices of what you want in U.S. dollars, include another 25 U.S. for the international shipping and handling fee, and your items will ship as immediately as they would for any of my American fans out there. So I hope to see you around. And remember also, the alternative, there's another uh, link I've got for if you just feel like donating. Besides the donating in the Square store, I also have a Streamlabs link for tips, which yeah, is just as good as a donation in the store or as a super chat since this channel still has yet to be monetized. So until then, I thank you all and remember felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you space cowboy.